better for last year. Yeah, that was nice. I'm glad you did that. Thanks a lot. Oh. Have a nice day, Luis. Perfect. Okay. We're all set. Great. Um, I'd like to uh, start the town council meeting for Monday, December 16th. Uh, Councillor Forrest, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I'd love to. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, Dolores, attendance, please. Councillor Warren Bello is unable to attend. Councillor Flanagan? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hill? Here. Councillor Mazzarella? Here. Councillor Parker? Here. Councillor Penelo? Here. Deputy Mayor Hurley is unable to attend. And Mayor Ralph? Here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Well, before we get going to uh, the agenda, I would like to uh, introduce the Camilleri family. Uh, we're here today. Uh, we have an official statement from His Excellency Governor Ned Lamont. I'll come right up here. If the family wants to join me, you can come on up. <coughs> here you go. Perfect. Right along there. You want to come right here? Great. Well, this is a couple days late, a couple weeks late. We're sorry about this. Um, we're just trying to work out the timing-wise on this. Uh, but this is a, uh, an official statement from uh, His Excellency Governor Ned Lamont. And I will read it. It is an official statement of where is it is important to accurately detect and test for Phelan McDermott syndrome, also known as 22Q13 deletion syndrome, which is a rare genetic condition caused by a deletion or other structural change of the terminal end of the chromosome 22 in the 22Q13 region, or a disease causing mutation of the Shank 3 gene. Whereas this micro deletion is rarely discovered by typical genetic screening and therefore a fluorescent in studio hybridization fish test or whole exome sequencing is recommended to confirm the diagnosis. And whereas individuals, parents, and advocacy groups can increase awareness of Phelan McDermott syndrome and its symptoms through science education opportunities. And whereas, although, this, or all, although the range and severity of symptoms may vary, Phelan McDermott uh, syndrome is generally thought to be characterized by intellectual disability of varying degrees, delayed or absent speech, symptoms of autism, spectrum disorder, low muscle tone, motor delays, and epilepsy. And whereas the state of Connecticut supports increased education and advocacy to raise awareness of Phelan McDermott syndrome and to better promote the expansion of resources available for the study and treatment of this genetic condition. Now, therefore, I, Ned Lamont, Governor of the State of Connecticut, do hereby declare October 21st, 2019, as Phelan McDermott Syndrome Awareness Day in the State of Connecticut, signed by Ned Lamont, Governor of the State of Connecticut. There you go. This is for Ava. And I, on a personal note, her brother Joe had made mention that uh, they should recognize this, just as the, proclam the proclamation says that awareness is key for this uh, type of syndrome. So with the awareness of Phelan McDermott Syndrome Day, hopefully we can recognize this and uh, one day look for a treatment to it. So thank you, Joe, for recognizing it. Thank you, Ava, for coming. And thank you, parents, for being here as well. We appreciate it. Here you go on your behalf. We'll see you. Take care. Hopefully, no school tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Do you have a picture of you? Can oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. Can you get a picture of her? Great. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the guy says, I'll pay this and I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. See you, Sid. Uh, I don't see any um, anything else up here, so we'll go to public comment. Uh, anybody wanting to speak? Gus, Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Gus, if you can just hold on one moment before you speak. I will start the clock um, with four minutes. The alarm will go off um, at four minutes, and then I will add a final minute to it. We have timer difficulties. It's not going to take that long anyway. Uh, good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. You know, I feel bad because every time I come up here, it seems that I complain all the time. And I start to look back and say, well, do I really have a reason or was I born to complain? Uh, sometimes last year or even before, I complain about uh, Bird Road, 24 foot wide, parking on both sides. And every time I go there, there's always like a problem. Something comes to my mind. It says, if there is a fire truck that has to go by, it will not fit. And I complained about a couple years ago. Nothing has been done. During the summer, I did stop by the fire marshal Mr. Dignotti, I guess. And I talked to him. He says, listen, I have a concern. I mean, every time I go by, again, the street, it's a problem. People park on both sides. People park, you know, on the right side, facing south or whatever, always in the wrong. And nothing ever gets done. And, I, and it's sad, because when I tell my friends, <laughs> they usually say, that's why we never go. Nobody listens. Is there any accountability in government work? I always ask, and I don't think there is any. How long is it going to take to put no s parking on one side of the street, on that particular street? I mean, once you know, does it take forever? You're talking about like, you know, a couple signs, two or three hundred dollars, and it's done. Even when you get out of a driveway, that there are cars parked all over the place, it's always a possibility. And matter of fact, not too long, two or three years ago, somebody, a cousin of mine, who went to see my brother, and coming out, and he hit a car. It seems that there should be better regulation, and it seems to be, it should be, more accountability in, in towns. And I don't think we have it right here. And as long as I see this, and as long as I see something wrong, I will not go away, guys. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak? Yes, sir, how are you? My name's Rick Newell and I live at 308 Knott Street. Uh, I have a concern, maybe you guys can look into it, but when I come down Franklin Avenue in the daytime, there is a flag at full staff. When I come up Knott Street at night, it's still left at full staff. It's up 24-7, in the rain, in the snow, proper flag etiquette. If you're going to leave this flag up, it needs to be illuminated at night or take it down. So maybe you guys can look into it. Um. Yeah, just again, where is where Mr. Newell is the exact location? Not Street, uh, not Street and Walcott Hill, where the green is, where the V is. When you come under the underpass. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to take a look. Let's see, we'll just check and verify that it's town property. If it is, well, we'll work to make it sure. It is because Sal used to raise it and lower it every Memorial Day. Yeah. So it's got to be on town property, right? We'll take a look. Well, thank you for letting it, uh, letting us know and getting it to our attention. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
Nyt päin. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank the town manager uh, for uh, providing that information to me for, uh, from the uh, Blumen Shapiro, the town's auditors. Uh, Mr., uh, the finance director, Mr. O'Neill, got that to me very quickly. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, I've, I've, I've spoke about my taxes going up constantly. $590 this year. That's 7%. 7% increase. In a year that we had revaluation, it should have gone down with all that brand new assets that came on board from our great, what do they call it? Economic development that we've had in town. We do have a staff that handles that. And we've been hearing for so long that all these businesses were coming to town, coming to town. But it didn't amount to much. $99 million, that was it, in a town this size. Uh, at least that's what it said in the budget, $99 million. But then again, Mr. Forrest said that the, our taxes were only going to go up $7. Mine went up 590 I think you made a big goof, Mr. Uh, Forrest. You made a lot of goofs. I think you deserve where you're sitting right now. I'd like to also say that um, we need to find ways of cutting our costs here in town. And uh, you know, I've talked about several of them already. Uh, another one that I had spoke about, but I never got finished talking about, was the Standish House. In the lease, it says the initial terms of this lease shall be for 50 years. 50 years. Can you imagine someone giving a lease for 50 years? Mr. Forrest approved it in the end. It shall commence on September 1st, 2007 and continue thereafter until September 1st, 2057 unless sooner terminated in accordance with the lease. Land or a landlord shall have the right at the 10th lease year and each 10th year thereafter with the tenant's involvement and discussion and upon approval of the town council to revise monetary terms and conditions set forth herein provided. However, that any increases shall remain within the tenant's ability to pay Otherwise, the increase shall be told until the tenant can afford the increase. This is in section th two of terms. You want to read it sometime. Uh, granted, September 1st of 2017 is um, hmm, 12 years ago. And we now have eight more years, but I think it would be very wise to start talking about this and get it on that chart for something to do when you get to that point, because chances are you folks will be, different people will be sitting in there, but you need to have it up there where everybody knows about it and everybody's expecting it. I mean, this was a sweetheart deal of rent for $100 a year for the Standish House. And we, the town, is responsible for so much. I would also encourage you to look into giving it back to the Standish family. They're very generous people. They could also go ahead and give it to the Historic Society if they would like, but then the Historic Society would be responsible for the maintenance of outside, the maintenance inside, the maintenance on the building, and all these other costs and insurances that we pay. We pay. Us taxpayers pay. We should get rid of that dump. We should get rid of that. It has no, no asset ability to us. It's an asset that's sitting there that's just chewing away at our dollars. And we should get rid of it. And I would encourage you to look into this and get it out on that Gantt chart 
So in the next eight years, long before eight years, in the sixth year from now, start talking to them about how much you want rent from them or they should go elsewhere for benefits. And then we could get rid of it because we don't need assets that are costing us this kind of money. And, and if you go back and look how much that costs to have that building painted and refurbished and all that other stuff, why should we citizens be paying for it? We don't get anything for it. And it's an asset that, it, it's an asset that someone else has taken the rent from, $43,000 a year, and we're losing everything. So I, I would hope that you folks would, would you know, I'm, I may even send this to all of you so you can read it, including Mr. Forrest. I'm sure he read it many times when he approved this. He also, well, okay, he's, uh, he's done some bad things here, and uh, we, we need to let everybody know how bad he is. But anyway, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing Marjorie? Mrs. Callahan Carson. Hello, I'm Marjorie Carson at 12 Avalon. Um, I have a couple concerns I wanted to vocalize here. One is with the snow plowing. The last few years I've noticed this that um, and wanted to see if there's an alternative to way, the way the town removes snow from sidewalks because as someone who walks their kids to school and I'm a big dog walker because I, have, I you know, have a dog um, and I live near the, the parks in Old Weathersfield um, over the last few years, instead of um, them snow blowing the sidewalks, the town workers use plows that are over like one to two feet wider than the sidewalks on the other side. And as a result, some of you may notice that large, like long, large swaths of grass and turf are ripped out um, each winter over and over and over again as, uh, as the, snow, the sidewalks are plowed. So piles are of gra gra grass are left on the side and they also create large divots on either side. So in some areas, it's just mud and, it, and water accumulates. So in the spring, summer, when it rains, it's just, you're walking on the sidewalk on either side is just water. And, and you know, that doesn't look good. It's weeds, it's not grown grass. And it also, you know, attracts uh, in, uh, mosquitoes and things like that nature. Um, and one another thing is that the level of sidewalk is so much higher now. So it's not level with the ground on either side. So over the years, it's been like two or three years I've noticed this, as the grass has been ripped and ripped out and ripped out, the sidewalk's up here, the grass is down here, easy tripping hazard, and this is all over Cove Park, Sterling Field, um, Mikey's Place, all places where a lot of elderly and kids walk and walk to school. So um, I did bring this up a couple years ago with just an email to um, Jeff Bridges, and he said the reason why they use no plows now is to save money on labor and, and it's quicker. And also there's, I guess, there's state requirements on how quickly the snow has to be removed. But he said that they will, the town will go back um, in the spring to fix all the areas where the town, where the grass has been removed. But as a person who's been in this town for a while, walks their dogs, that just doesn't happen. The only place I've seen them actually repair the grass along the sidewalk is around the Board of Ed building. I don't know why. It's literally the line <laughs> around the Board of Ed, and it doesn't go into Sterling Field or Mikey's Place. It doesn't get fixed there. I don't know why. But even then, it's like that's a lot of labor and cost, too, if you had to do this every year in the spring, and you did have to go to where every single sidewalk is around town property, had to refill with grass, with grass seed and dirt to make it safer and look better and you know, naturally grow, that's a lot of money too. So my question to you is, is there a way that we can put our brains together and find maybe better equipment or some other way to have a narrower way to remove the snow? instead of taking all the grass along with it. And also, the, snow, the salt gets poured on the grass as well on the other side. So just as someone who sees this all the time, because where I live, and it doesn't improve, and it's been getting worse and worse over the years. So that's one thing. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, my concern over the burn plant in Hartford. Um, that's managed by MIRA, Mira, Myra, I don't know how they pronounce it. Um, as you probably know, the facility has been broken down several times this past year, including situations where there's fires started in the facility, and also where the, to the point where it broke down for several weeks where they didn't stop garbage from being delivered there, and that it was like 20,000 tons of garbage are just piled up in the building. And this building, these buildings are really close to Weathersfield, really close to where we live, I live, in the north end of town. So we get the brunt of that, and um, I know they're kind of talking to the state legislature, they're 
they know that you need to repair it, and they're trying to figure out how. It could cost up to $200, $300 million. And that's up in the air, but I think it's really important to really look at this as a town, as you, know, you as leaders, and maybe, maybe there's someone here that also is um, assigned to look at it and watch over it, but maybe do extra watching over this issue for, to represent us, because Hartford bears the brunt of it big time, because they get all the trucks that come in and the burning of all the garbage of 70 towns. 70 towns bring their garbage to Hartford to burn. We are right there. My neighborhood is right there. And I can smell the burning sometimes, and we can get a whiff of the emissions sometimes when the, um, the wind is blowing a certain way in the summer or something like that. So we, we should, as a town, think about how it affects us. And if they go to maybe put $300 million into this facility, maybe we should push back and say, hey, do we, should we even have this facility here? Should we be like 70 towns? Shouldn't they take more of the brunt instead of just us in Hartford, which is we're the ones that you know, really take on the most? And do we get a discount? Do we have any say? Do we have any more say over how this facility is going to be managed in the future? Um, you know, 70 towns drive their garbage over the highways that are in Wethersfield every day. And we get the emissions from that too. So I think because it's kind of a prime issue right now, it will be this year in front of the state legislature. And fees will go up just like MDC with Mike. Mike, I know, is concerned about the MDC costs. The, the cost of the garbage and the tipping fees and the tonnage fees is going to go up as well because of these problems. But I think it's we're at maybe a point where we could actually have a say because they have to make decisions, and maybe we can push to be more of a decision maker and push a policy that would be beneficial to us instead of us bearing the garbage of all these other towns. Like the outer suburbs don't have to bear this brunt at all. Um, so just something like that. And finally, I would just say, um, I know we're at the beginning stage of the budget, but I fully support a fully funded budget for the schools, and um, we'll be watching. I, I'll be watching, and I just hope you know that there were a lot of cuts last year, and it was almost you know, cut to the bone. And also just my daughter started freshman year this year with a half year of social studies because they can't, couldn't afford a full year of so, social studies. It's never happened before. If you look at any other high school around, they all have a full year of social studies their freshman year, as well as other, the remaining years, half year social studies because of the budget cuts. And there are other cuts as well, which I won't go over because I'm going to go over time. But um, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Anybody else want to speak? Mr. Lynch. Jim Clinch, 903 Ridge Road. Uh, nobody seems to want to talk about it, but the, the water department, I've lived in town for 54 years, and when I moved to town, water was the cheapest commodity you could buy. Now it's probably getting buttoned up there with the electric light company and the, uh, and the gas company. I, um, I own another priest property that's vacant, and no water is being used, and I get a bill of sixty-seven dollars a month. The worst thing this council could have ever done—not this council, but the council before—is to allow them to go to monthly billing rather than the three months that they were. Because they've really—I pay more now in my monthly billing than I did in my three-month billing. And I read an article recently in the papers about. I don't know, they want to they wanna jack up a, another increase in the water. I think it's obscene what they're doing to this, this town in the district. And it's about time somebody stepped up and told them no more. And I realized we had a problem in town where people were getting sewage and stuff in their basement. But you know, I, it's, it's, uh, it's like moving next to a firehouse and then complaining about the the the, uh, the horn going off when there's a fire, like which which happened in this town. Now they only blow one short beep and that's it because the people go around them complained about the noise. Same thing with the water department. The, you you should have known before you moved into the house whether it had a problem or not. You know, give me a break. And I'm paying for these people's mistakes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clinch. Anybody else want to? speak first public comment and if not okay thank you we'll move into uh general comments uh council reports any council reports councillor pentwell 
Yeah, I was actually able to attend both the EDIC and the RDA uh, commissions this past Thursday. So I'll kind of, if you don't mind, I know uh, I, I could even, I could pass out the books if you want, or I could just do both. It's your call. He's got it. <laughs> My voice a little off from three games from hockey. of hockey. Yeah, I got it. All right, so just uh, I'll start off with the EDIC first. Uh, a couple dates to keep in mind. Uh, the old Weathersfield parking study has had three meetings open to all residents. The fourth will be January 13th at 7 p.m. here in council chambers. Uh, the state of the town breakfast will take place on January 16th at 8 a.m. at the Keeney Center. Uh, the team is working hard on the town guide and calendar and should be ready the next week or two. Uh, the marketing committee will be meeting this week to discuss business outreach initiatives to ensure strong communication with businesses, <coughs> excuse me, planning and zoning. Sorry to steal your th thunder, Tom, but uh, they received uh, an application for 24 Maple uh, Maple Street, which is on the corner of Route 3 and Middletown Ave. Uh, happy to report the board has already uh, has rental commitments for 50% of units in uh, the first building, and they're still anticipating phase two to be completed in late spring, early summer. Uh, 25 businesses and developers from town attended the uh, Connecticut Green Bank information, se information session on funds available uh, to reduce their operating costs. The initial feedback uh, overall was positive, which is I think is a great thing for businesses in town. Uh, last week, I was actually unable to attend, but the salute to business uh, was held, and it was a tremendous success from what I heard. Uh, the town recognized various businesses for the service to Weathersfield residents. Uh, Puritan Furniture, the building is officially down and development will continue throughout the winter, weather permitting. Uh, moving into RDA, pretty short meeting. Um, what was discussed were the next steps regarding the moratorium uh, on the Salicine Highway. Uh, beginning in January, a subcommittee of uh, the RDA will begin drafting potential regulations for review. Um, we also discussed the use of the blight or ordinance as a supplement to our municipal development plan, uh, reasoning being addressing property conditions aids in stabilizing the tax base. Um, we also discussed uh, reviewing incentives from other communities and looking at what they do and determining if we need uh, to evolve our toolbox for what we're doing. And last but not least, um, we discussed how best to continue our outreach to business owners and private developers. It's great. Good to hear. Anybody else? Councilor Mazzarella. Uh, two weeks ago, I uh, attended the planning and zoning um, hearing on uh, wag time play and stay on Beaver, uh, Beaver Road. Uh, they were granted a special permit to operate the, uh, the doggy daycare with an outdoor, uh, outdoor area for the dogs to play. Uh, the um, owners have agreed to put up a sound barrier along three sides of the, of the property. Uh, the sound engineers have pretty much guaranteed that they'll be able to knock the, uh, the, the noise down about 20 decibels. Um, they stated that uh, the residents would not be able to hear the dogs. Um, there are stipulations. Uh, they will be required to have the sound engineer perform testing on two separate occasions uh, to confirm that the design is working if it is not working or if they continue to receive complaints from, from neighbors, they've agreed to take uh, whatever uh, remedial action is, uh, is necessary to, uh, to correct the problem, uh, including uh, changing their method of operation and when and if the dogs could even go outside. Um, uh, there's a meeting tomorrow night as uh, Pat said on uh, 24 Middletown Avenue for the uh, ABC uh, Burger place. <laughs> I don't know what the name of it. Artisan, Artisan Burger. Uh, Artisan Burger, sorry. Uh, so that's tomorrow night in uh, these chambers at 7 o'clock. Great. Any other council reports? No. If not, um, I've got just a couple things I want to say. Uh, tonight is, uh, um, to go off of what Mr. Clinch was saying about the MDC, tonight is the MDC vote. Uh, as of right now, uh, we don't have an update on whether or not they voted to accept it or not. 
um, which may be a good thing because it's been two and a half hours. So if the deliberations are going on, we're not the only town that's voicing our concern or concerns about the uh, rate increases. Um, I did sit in a panel held by uh, Senator Saud Anwar from uh, South Windsor last week that the um, senator from South Windsor wanted to host and have MDC there. Um, it was an informative meeting uh, that MDC provided similar to what they have been provided in the past to us, um, but our voices were collectively heard by them that uh, a rate increase uh, yet again would be um, not um, you know, looked fairly upon by this council. Uh, if I do get any updates from uh, the MDC vote, I will be sure to let you know tonight. Um, salute, Pat did say the salute to business was the other day. That was a, um, a success. We do it every year, uh, the EDIC with the Chamber of Commerce. It is a great way to celebrate businesses that have had commitment here in town as well as new businesses that have chosen to locate in Weathersfield. We do appreciate having them here uh, as well. Um, Oh yes, uh, Live Right Wellness, uh, Kim's Flower Shop, Ascot Catering, uh, Young Italian American Association Ladies Auxiliary, um, which I didn't see any young ladies there, by the way. They were, they've been around since 70 years old or, or 70 years or so, um, and Ooh La La Do uh, Dog Spa, um, as well as Lucky Lewis, were all recognized as um, outstanding stewards in the business community for their uh, years of service here in town. We do appreciate having them. Uh, also, speaking of investing in town, last night was the premiere of Rediscovering Christmas on the Lifetime channel. Uh, it is yet another movie that um, was filmed here in town. Uh, I was uh, invited to the Historical Society to say a few remarks, and this is their second year of having their own premiere for that movie. Um, for those that don't know, Old Weathersfield has been uh, chosen as filming location for the last two years for various Hallmark and Lifetime movies. It's great for the community. It does a number of uh, things, having production companies here in town. They eat at our restaurants. They stay in hotels nearby. They shop at our retail uh, establishments, uh, as well as I believe they uh, cover the cost of some of the public works and um, fire and uh, um, police. Uh, that need to be on site as well. Uh, I, having these uh, production companies in town is a win-win for the town, I believe, and it gives us a chance to showcase what we have to offer, and hopefully they will consider coming back to, uh, to Weathersfield in the future. Um, this is also uh, our last meeting before the holidays, and I just wanted to say a, uh, just a quick remark that social and youth services are doing a uh, gift drive, a toy drive, uh, I believe uh, they are still accepting unwrapped gifts downstairs in town hall uh, at social and youth services up until I believe the 18th. So if anybody uh, is um, looking to uh, donate, uh, that's a great opportunity and uh, I know social and youth services would appreciate it. Um, to get into a little bit of business, I do wanna ask the town manager a couple, of, um, just a couple of reports that we've been talking about in the past. Uh, the Tremco uh, roof report uh, I know one had come out in the past, uh, about a year or two ago. If we could get an updated Tremco report, condition of town building, and I believe Board of Ed buildings as well, they provide both, um, just to get an idea of um, you know how our maintenance on the roofs are doing. Uh, every year it seems to come that uh, you know one or two roofs need to be repaired or something. But if we can get an overall sense on the condition of those roofs, um, and then finally. And this is something I'd only seen once or twice in my time on the council, but I know uh, engineering <coughs> provides it. It is a, um, a report on the condition of the town roads. Um, from what I remember, there's actually two reports, if I remember correctly. There's one that gives conditions, and it's a grading scale of you know, 0 to a 100. Um, but there's also one that comes out prior to the fall and spring paving uh, seasons that um, talks about the – or shows off which the priori priorities are in their by mileage, I guess. It's that formula that we have to figure in um, which roads can um, fit into that formula. Um, if we can get a, a sense of where we are with um, priority roads as well as uh, a general accounting of the condition of roads, we would appreciate that. 
And uh, I think that may be about it for right now. Um, town manager's report. Give me one second just oh, to yeah. finish the note. Yep, yep. <laughs> no problem. <coughs> Thank you to the mayor and council. Uh, just quickly for the report. Uh, as of recently, we added two new members to the Keisha Farms for a total of nine. That will top off um, the, the total. As you may recall, there were 42 total applicants. Um, we've balanced them on experience, background, uh, trying to get, it, I'll call it an eclectic mix of talent to the table so that we can um, go through the process. Those two names are Pamela Rowe uh, and Mary Breton. They are both the butters to the property. Uh, we anticipate that a request for proposals will be going out, posted probably no later than uh, the end of this week. I'm anticipating Thursday or Friday, uh, in which case we'll be able to um, obtain a consultant. Proposals will be due in January, with the committee then going to rank those consultants in terms of professional ability, previous experience, um, diversity of the team, um, and their ability to deliver as well as cost. Um, at this point, I'll anticipate that we'll interview probably the top three to four candidates, depending upon how many individuals actually apply. And then at that point, um, we'll uh, go through the process of seeing whether or not we can retain them, um, since there would be some financial impact. The committee will post, beginning in January, a regular meeting schedule. Uh, at this point, you're looking at the first meeting of, uh, the first Monday of every month starting at 5.30 prior to the council meeting, um, which I apologize, I walked in I think at 7.01 because we were just uh, wrapping up the end of the special meeting. We, uh, staff began reviewing the capital improvement projects for this year. Uh, we are in the process of creating a draft list which will go to the CIAC or Capital Improvement Advisory Committee. The first meeting of the committee is scheduled for Wednesday, January 15th. Um, at what we do on an annual basis is we meet, uh, we select a date, we'll meet three times with a fourth meeting pending, depending upon whether or not we can get through the entire process. At this case, in this case, we're looking um, every Wednesday starting January 15th in the town manager's conference room. Those dates are subject to change, but they can be found on at the town clerk's office as well as posted on the website. Uh, for me, far too often, I think we take for granted the dangers our emergency service personnel go through on a regular basis. Uh, as a small town, sometimes you don't hear everything that is going on and everything that's happening. Uh, unfortunately, we do hear about the negative things more often than the positive. Last week, the police department recognized 11 officers for acts of bravery or going above and beyond in the normal course of duty um, over the last three years. Those recognitions include a life savings award, which were given to Lieutenant Donald Crabtree, Lieutenant Michael Connolly, Detective Christopher Morris, Officer Peter McGee, SRO Eric Knapp, Detective James Darby, Sergeant Michael Wren. Also a police department division citation given to officers Robert Malinowski and, officers Kev and Officer Kevin Wallace. Citation and Medal of Merit for Officer Peter Salvatore and the Chief's Letter of Commendation given to Officer Kevin Foster. Uh, family and friends came out to support them and it was a great opportunity to recognize these individuals for um, not only just what they do every day, but for those unique circumstances that um, that drive them to do the things that um, I don't know if I would be able to do. Um, so I think it was important. And I thank the chief uh, as well as the staff who were able to put that together um, so that we could recognize those employees. As council, as the mayor mentioned and Councilor Pentlow mentioned, there was a great celebration for the salute to business. Uh, in addition to the names that the mayor recognized. There was special recognition for economic development in the last year given to the Borden. Uh, new developments at 1881 Berlin Turnpike and the learning experience which opened up at 88 Executive Square. And also Charles uh, Forsdick was recognized by the Tourism Commission for his efforts and years serving on the commission and trying to bring new ideas uh, and new in drive new individuals into town. Uh, and I, there were four photo contest winners that were uh, that were named. If you have an opportunity, those will cycle through the website, and we're trying to get those into the um, the uh, annual calendar, which should be out in the next two weeks. 
uh, hopefully less in the next two weeks. But we had some scheduling concerns with uh, commissions. We wanted to make sure those were settled before we actually printed uh, many copies to get out into the public. And then just quickly, oh, um, the town has submitted a request for proposals for the town attorney. Those are due on December 30th. I believe the process is for uh, for the council to form a, a committee yes. uh, to review yep. those. Mm -hmm. So I think the RFP goes till the end of the month. Yep. And then the committee will be created probably the first week of January to, to review. Excellent. Thank you. And last, some, some fun news which kind of ties into the, um, the stardom that we're getting for movies uh, in town. Uh, Wallet Hub the personal finance website released its 2019 best small cities in America, which included metros with populations between 20 metro areas between populations between 25,000 and 100,000. The list compared more than 1,200 cities across the nation based on 42 indicators of livability, home ownership rate, the number of performing arts centers in the area, job growth, uh, and again, a long list. Connecticut actually had 22 small cities make the overall rankings. West Hartford ranked number one. Our little town of Wethersfield ranked number three. And our highest category categories were in affordability, economic health, education and health of residents, quality of life, and safety. And with that, I'll conclude by saying happy holidays to everyone. Great. I think all of us who live in Wethersfield know that we're number one and we're not gonna <laughs> give it up to West Hartford. Uh, great, Dolores. Well, I have to tell you that we've already started um, the, the town committees uh, for the Democrats and Republicans are going to be having uh, enrollments for people for their uh, committees. And they have to be done by January 14th and into my office by the 15th. So we're on to uh, a very busy year, 2020, for the uh, a lot of primaries probably will be had and uh, Wethersfield and Connecticut's primary for the presidential is, August, is April 28th. So it's not until then, and I, everybody else will be doing it before us, but we're better for earlier than usual, yeah. the state. Are we part of the Super Tuesday, or is that? Yes, well, one of them. Okay, <laughs> great, looking forward to it. Uh, great, uh, council action. Uh, I think we have some appointments to uh, first resignations from um, <coughs> appointments. I make a motion to accept the resignations from the following uh, Inlands, Wetlands, and Conservation Commission, uh, Lou E. Michaels, uh, from a term of 7 1 19 to 6 30 22, from Zoning Board of Appeals. James F. Riley, term of 1317 to 63020. And from the building committee, Charles Carey, uh, 12715 to project completion. Great. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. And then now we have appointments to boards and commissions. I make a motion to accept the following appointments to the Youth Advisory Board, Stephanie Bernal, uh, 12 16 19 to 6 30 22. And from Inland, Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission, Mary Frazier, 12 16 19 to 6 30 20. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Great. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion's adopted. Great. Thank you. And I think the next we go to 
uh, ordinance of resolution and appointment for introduction. And this is the uh, ordinance to amend chapter 122 on blighted premises. I believe all council members have it. Uh, I just wanted to ask the town manager, is there, um, what's protocol for this? We will just introduce it uh, tonight. Public hearing would most likely be first meeting in January and then any changes or suggestions we would take in at that point would be adopted second meeting of January. Yep, yep, you can, that's it, yeah, correct. You, it's probably best to do it that way, right? So you'd have the pu public hearing at the first meeting and then the vote to move forward or not um, at the second. Is, would the proposed ordinance be, is it public right now or, mm -hmm. okay, can yep. they find it on, I mean, they can find it on the agenda. It, so mistaken. it's it's on the agenda for this week. There's also a copy for anyone in the audience. There should be copies out there. I will make sure that the revised gets posted to the website. I'm not 100% certain it was reposted. The, the original was, um, for a little background, uh, this previously was introduced, or this was introduced under the previous council. So it was listed. Um, I just wanna make sure so I would say tomorrow by noon, any updated ordinance would be, uh, draft would be online. But otherwise the council uh, uh, packet does have it. Okay. Um, so anyone who downloads the council packet would have the correct one. The most updated? The most updated, yes. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Any comment? Councilor Mazzarella. Um, the the uh, changes have gone back and forth quite a few times and uh, I looked at what's current, what's current now, compared it to the last version. There's quite a few of those changes have disappeared. They've, things have been added and then taken back out. Would it be possible to come up with a clean version that you can see what the changes are from the original? So the one that's posted online has changes from the one that you currently have? but it's not the same as the one that's in force right original. now. It's not the same as the one that's in force right now. Right, okay. but it has, it has a number of changes of things that were incorporated and then deleted. So you really can't see what, the what original was original. Was. So I can change the color coding so that you can see the difference prior to the, I'll, I'll change it this week so you'll have it prior to the public hearing. Might be yep, I can do that. helpful for people to try and understand what we're Right. What we're trying to do. Because right now you're probably seeing a revised copy of the revised yeah. ordinance from the first round. There's okay. three, three colors we're up to, I think. Oh, well, so the color differential, there's a green in there that denotes the fact that I moved it from one section below to a section above. That's why you see the second color. But, yep, I can create, I can fix that. It's a little tough to follow. Okay, so the green means it's not the newest of the new. It just simply means that it is new language that has been moved from one part of the ordinance to another part. Cor correct. Okay. Right. So it was deleted from section, let me just see that quickly. F. One, it must be 122-8. It was probably item E, one, two, three, it's now Oh, you're right, item F, it's now moved up into item E, one, two, three. But I'll, I'll fix it online just to avoid the confusion. It, it'll just be easier to start fresh. What is existing, what is being deleted, and what is being added. Correct. We could do that. Yep. Great, thank you. And I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Councilor Forrest who worked on this prior to this council. Um, so if you have any insight uh, going forward, after the, uh, the public hearing or even before the public hearing would be greatly accepted for, uh, for some edification for this. It would be appreciate, appreciated. Um, do we take a comment from the council? I don't believe we took a comment from the council. Um, do you want me to read it away? Yeah, the, I followed the order that's uh, previously prescribed. Okay. So you can, you, but you can do it either way. No. Um, do we have the minutes of December 2nd in front of us? I think we all have it on our packet. Give you a second to, sure. yeah, to read. Mayor, 
Yeah. Well, I yeah, I don't have a copy of the minutes in front of me, but um, I did look at it earlier today. Motion to accept the minutes as written. So moved. Motion's made. Second. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion to adopt the minutes is uh, accepted. And we'll go back into second public comment. Anybody wishing to speak for a second time or for the first time? Mr. Young? Good evening, <coughs> excuse me. Good evening, uh, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. As I was talking about earlier, we need to find ways of reducing costs. And uh, one of the costs that I'm going to address in a moment is the Keisha Farm. We paid a tremendous price for that piece of property. And now that piece of property is going to be dangling around our neck forever and ever. But I propose that we, we do something with that property and get it back on the tax roll. I believe that $75,000 an acre was tremendous. And the only way we're going to recoup is to get that into a development position for some type of a planned community, some kind of a smaller home community in that area, in that, on that piece of property, that would be more or less ready for people who are retiring, people who are selling their house in Wethersfield or neighboring towns that want to stay in the area, or have two properties, have a property in the southern climate, and I have a property up here in the northern climate. But the fact remains, if we got the, those plots with those nice homes sitting on them, into a tax, taxable status, I think we, we could pull ourselves out of this mess that we're into. I've, I've talked about the prices. I've talked about prices of other properties prior to the purchase and during the dishonesty of our government that we have here in Wethersfield for so long about that property. The failure of our government to tell us exactly what the, what the value was of that property. Now we're stuck. We couldn't sell that property for $2.4 million unless we found another town to buy it because towns are the only ones that pay ridiculous prices for property. Except for Windsor and except for Glastonbury. They get, they get good prices when they buy. But towns like Wethersfield, they don't give a hoot about money because it's, they don't care. We're the caliber of people we have that were on the council at that time. So I really believe if we, if we looked at that property as some kind of a planned community, some way of holding people, selling, selling those nice homes on small lots where you can get a number of lots. And I'll give you an example. Uh, in the town of Manchester, there was uh, a year ago, um, 30 acres. Keisha Farm is 32. Sold for $549,000 a year ago. You just bought the Keisha Farm for what? $75,000, uh, for $2.4 million, which was $75,000 an acre. This property is... 500 and we'll call it $550,000 divided by 30 acres, you get $15,000 an acre. A real, a real bummer on the part of Weathersfield for when, when they put their heads together to buy property. This, but this was bought by private developer, which, which I just got done saying. Municipalities pay a lot more because that's how they are. They don't care. But you get a developer, he, he goes out and he bargains. Obviously, town of Wethersfield didn't bargain at all. Matter of fact, they probably gave more than what the guys wanted up at the Keisha farm. But again, this 30 acres is going to yield 44 building lots. You think, and, and 
and I heard like 34, 35 building lots for the Keisha farm back only once or twice back during the brief conversations that we had from our town officials on that property. But this is gonna yield 44, 44 little homes that would probably sell for $250,000 a piece. Bang, 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 and, and generate taxes. And no children, because it's one of those planned developments that don't allow children. And the, guy, the people that buy it has a house in Florida or Carolinas, and they got a place up here because they still have family here. And it might be the best option to do with that property. At least dollars and cents, it would be the best. And as I spoke a few a little while ago about the Standish property, that is, a, that is a big thing around our neck. Every couple of years, there's big buckaroos that we, citizens who don't have anything to do with that property, we have to pay. And we collect, our, as a town, $100 a year, thanks to Mr. Forrest and his pals back 12 years ago when they signed that lease. Uh, for 50 years. So I really would hope, Mayor, that you know, you, you got to start thinking about getting us out of this hole because we are in a hole. And again, the Standish House, you got to put it up on the chart so everybody sees it that in six years you're going to start negotiating because in eight years it better be done about what you're going to do. And, and same with this property. We need to unload it. Unload it as quickly as possible. It's the same idea as the Standish House. If we put a park in there, it's going to have costs every year. If we put some kind of stadium in there, it's even more costs. We know what Catone Field costs us. If we end up putting a school in there, we know what that costs. Okay. And we don't need one of those Thank either. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank you very much. Anybody else wanting to speak? Mr. Colantonio. Good evening again, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, I just, uh, this is the end of the year and I would just like to probably apologize to to any of the members that have been probably offended by me and the, the previous council. Uh, sometimes the way I come across, it's, uh, this is my second language, I guess, you know, so it's it's not as easy as uh, as one one language. And, uh, and I also want to wish uh, everybody, you know, Merry Christmas and, uh, and Happy New Year too. Uh, and as we say in Italian, like, you know, Buon Natale e Felice Anno Nuovo to everybody and the ones that they're watching. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Anybody else wanting to speak? Well, speaking of Christmas and winter, I did want to um, say that the Town of Wethersfield Police Department did issue a uh, no parking ban effective at midnight tonight uh, until further notice just uh, uh, in advance yeah. of the... <laughs> Um, the storm that's coming. So everybody be safe uh, out on the roads uh, tonight, tomorrow, and have a happy holiday and a safe new year. Thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Whoa, 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 oh, sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I got to get into an uh, executive session. That's right. Yep. Thank you. Uh, move to executive session, Mayor. Uh, motion to move into executive session. Second. Motion to go into executive sec session and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.